Okay. Let's talk about physiology. What do we have for physiology? Okay, let's start. Physiology. Gastrointestinal regulatory substances. Uh, regulatory substances. Gastrin. Gastrin. Gastrin source G cells. G for gastrin, G for cells. Uh, but most importantly, where they're present. They're present in the antrum of the stomach and duodenum. So they are present mostly here in the antrum and the duodenum. Uh, what is their action? They increase hydrogen secretion, increase growth of gastric mucosa, increase gastric motility, regulation, increase by stomach distension, alkalization, amino acids, peptide vagal stimulation, uh, GRP, uh, and it has decreased regulation if you have a pH very low. Uh, that's going to decrease the... Uh, that's going to decrease your... Uh, um, gastrin levels but let's talk about how they do this right well I think it's going to co cover it next uh, because they don't do it directly although they do it directly but also they have a more common pathway but let's talk about these notes here they're increasing chronic PPI use so what is the PPI going to do PPI they are inhibiting your uh, parietal cells when you're, you inhibit your parietal cells Guess what? The gastrin wants to increase the hydrogen ions, I mean HCL, uh, through the action of the parietal cell. So it's going to keep on hitting parietal cell, but you have inhibited the, the parietal cell by giving PPI. So guess what? These are keep coming, keep coming here, uh, trying to get uh, to increase the acidity uh, of the stomach, but it's, they can't do it, so they're going to grow, 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 grow. And this causes growth. They will be increased. So gastrin G cells will be increased in chronic PPI use. Uh, increase in uh, chronic atrophic gastritis. Again, H. pylori. What is H. pylori going to do? Well, it's a different mechanism of action here. H. pylori decreases the D cells which secrete, if you look here, these cells secrete somatostatin. So if you decrease the somatostatin, guess what somatostatin is like trying to inhibit every uh, every uh, sub regulatory substance, all hormones, so it inhibits all hormones. So, uh, But when you have decreased the somatostatins by, by having an H. pylori infection, now that is indirectly going to cause increase in gastrin. Because normally, that gastrin was uh, gastric acid was getting decreased by it. Uh, so when you don't have somatostatin, increased gastrin needs to increase HCL, right? So that's how they're saying that you have also increased in the chronic atrophic gastritis due to example H pylori, due to H pylori. Again, uh, the third thing is way too much increased in. Zollinger Allison syndrome, gastronoma. So this is uh, itself it secretes gastrin. So when itself it secretes gastrin, you have a lot of gastrin. So much so that even the PPIs can block you, nothing can block you. You are just there, top of the world. That's the Zollinger Allison syndrome. But to be more uh, going into details of ZES, uh, I don't know if it's, uh, let's just cover it here. So ZES, so what we have here, it is one thing, uh, you will have abdominal pain, you will have the chronic diarrhea, ulcers, ulcers are very common here, ulcers beyond duodenal pulp, beyond duodenal pulp, or maybe in jejunum. Whenever you have beyond duodenal bulb ulcers or in the jejunum, it's always ZES. Okay, um, and also you have heartburn due to that also. Uh, uh, the treatment is a surgery, and uh, PPI is not going to work. It is refractory. I mean, if it does work, great. But if it is refractory to PPI, then surgery is the answer. 
but uh, it's not for you're not gonna be tested on that so uh, forget that point all right moving on with the somatostatin somatostatin is that coming from the D cells in the pancreatic islet and the GI mucosa it decreases the gastric acid, decreases pancreatic small intestine fluid secretion, decreases gallbladder contraction, decreases insulin and glucagon release, basically decreasing all the things. Uh, regulation of this thing, it is increased by acid. So more somatostatin is going to come if you have an acidic environment. It is decreased by vagal stimulation. Notes, uh, it, it inhibits... Uh, Secretion of various hormones encourages somatostasis. Octreotide is an analog used to treat acromegaly, carcinoid syndrome, vipoma, and variceal bleed. And yesterday we did talk about how octreotide is, treats the variceal bleed and how it decreases the portal pressure. All right, CCK, cholecystokinin. Cholecystokinin. Uh, CCK. It's uh, coming from the eye cells in the duodenum and jejunum. Increases uh, pancreatic secretion. Most important thing is here. Increases the gallbladder contraction. So if you have, and we did talk about this yesterday as well. If you have any, uh, any gallstone and you have a uh, uh, you eat some fats, your CCK gets and uh, stimulates your gallbladder, and again, you're going to have pain. Uh, so here's the regulation. This uh, uh, cholecystokinin uh, gets increased by fatty acids and amino acids. So fatty foods gets you CCK, gets you pain if you have a gallbladder stone. Exon neuronal muscarinic pathway to cause pancreat, pancreat, uh, pancreatic secretion. <clears throat> okay, that's also good to know. Well, secretin now. S in the duodenum. Secretin increases pancreatic bicarb, decreases acid. If you're increasing bicarb, for sure you're decreasing bicarb, I mean acid. And also increases the secretion of bile. Increase by acids right because when you when you stimulate secretin it's like get me bicarb so it is stimulated with by acids fatty acids in the lumen and du duodenum so increase in bicarb neutralizes gastric acid in the duodenum allowing pancreatic enzymes to function yeah so that bicarb neutralizes the acid and lets the pancreatic enzymes to work great now you have the uh, glucose-dependent insulinotropic peptide, right? So GIP, they are from the K-cells in the duodenum and the jejunum, jejunum, exocrine. One is exocrine function, one is endocrine function. What is the exocrine function? Decreases the hydrogen secretion, and the endocrine increases the insulin release increased by fatty acid amino acid and glucose also called gip oral glucose load increases insulin now this is important oral glucose load gives you increased insulin compared to iv equivalent due to gip secretion so if you have a uh, if you want to increase insulin the oral is way better than giving IV uh, glucose. Why? Why? Because the, if you give the oral glucose, that is going to stimulate your GIP, and that GIP is going to directly stimulate your insulin release, while the IV has to go through all the bloodstream towards your pancreatic beta cells and then cause insulin release. So that's a long story, but this is way easier. That's why oral is preferred over the IV. Next thing is motilin. Motilin is small intestine. Uh, produces migratory motor complexes, MMCs. Increases in fasting state. 
well if you're fasting uh that is like uh causing your uh migrating motor complexes to work and motility occurs in your small intestine you know uh so motility receptor agonist we have the erythromycin uh they are used to stimulate intestinal peristalsis right but uh here for this point this is going to be it is used uh it is uh, only works for like 4 weeks because after that it's just immune you get you get immune to that so diminished over time why how do you get immune or diminished over time due to the phenomena known as tachyphylaxis and if you don't know what tachyphylaxis is go to your general form okay <clears throat> so uh so that's why so you say okay if if you can only give it for less than 4 weeks what about you want to give something then you have to give the other drug which is called metoclopramide which is your d2 receptor antagonist but the problem with is that d2 receptor dopamine uh receptor antagonist is that it's going to cause you those extra pyramidal side effects extra pyramidal side effects uh but this is the way to go and uh this uh, i mean let's talk about where are we giving all of this right so we are giving this in for the treatment of diabetic gastroparesis in which due to diabetes long standing diabetes intestines aren't moving leading to chronic constipation but there's got to be somewhere right we want to stimulate those guts how do we do that well we can do that by giving metoclopramide okay one more thing guys here um give me one second here <clears throat> 